Hey, how's it going? So today we're going to look at Roblox. You may have heard of it. It's a pretty popular game creation site where users design and upload their own games as well as play other games in a multiplayer environment. I like to think of Roblox as sort of like Unity made easy. So if anyone has used Unity and had trouble with it and, you know, just wants to make a game in, an, in a, you know, a, a fairly relatively easy sort of way, I would highly recommend Roblox because it just makes the creative flow that much easier by having the very basics taken care of and you can just dive in and start creating the game you want to make. And there's over 15 million games that have been created by users. Some of the most popular Roblox games are Work at a Pizza Place and Roblox High School and there's also uh, Call of Robloxia which is kind of like a ripoff of Call of Duty but at the moment it looks like they're waiting for updates. You can access Roblox on PC, Mac, iOS, Android, Amazon devices, and Xbox One. The only thing you have to do to access Roblox is to go to the Roblox website at www.roblox.com and sign up for a free account. So once you sign up and make a Roblox account, you're going to have the opportunity to open and use the Roblox Studio application. And Roblox Studio allows players to construct games with building bricks or blocks that vary in size, shape, and color. And this software resembles Microsoft Visual Studio. Games on Roblox can be scripted using the programming language Lua to affect events that occur in-game and create different scenarios. Roblox uses a sandboxed edition of Lua, known as Lua 5.1. And for those of you wondering what a script is, it's basically a series of instructions for a program to follow to create custom behavior. In order to give these instructions, you must provide the instruction in words the program can understand, or code. Roblox developers have added in functionality to Lua so that users can create interactive content like tools, buttons, leaderboards, and more in their places. Games in Roblox are comprised of places. A place can be thought of as a level. It contains level geometry, user interfaces, game logic, all the pieces that make a level in your game. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make a place. You can see when you open Roblox Studio that you have some game templates you can use and I'm under the basic option here and I'm just going to click on flat terrain. And every game must have at least one place in it. So once you edit a place it can be published as part of a new game or it can be added to an existing game. And we're going to be looking at the Roblox Studio interface. Okay, it looks like it loaded up. Um, so, yes, this is your Roblox Studio interface, and we're going to tweak it a little bit to make it easier to work with. And so you can see it's divided into several sections. The top ribbon contains all of the major actions, and the rest of Studio is arranged in tabs and windows. So the main window is a 3D view of your game, and the rest of the windows show information about your game, allow you to insert objects into the game, and configure various aspects of your game. So some of the view controls um, in this environment, you want to use your secondary mouse click to change your perspective. So you go ahead and you click your secondary mouse and drag across the screen, and you can see it changes your perspective. Now, if you want to move around the environment, you can use the W, A, S, and D keys, WASDA keys, to float around your environment and this becomes very helpful once you start creating your level. If you want to go up and down, you use the Q and the E keys. E goes up and Q goes down. So with all these controls, you can start to basically move around your building environment. And if you look at the top of the screen here, you can see we have several different tabs. There, it looks like there's six in total. We got Home, Model, terrain, test, view, and plugins. And we'll go through each one just to show you how they work. So for the first tab, the home tab, it basically contains basic functions necessary for building and testing your game. It's kind of like a quick tools menu. It has some features of the other tabs. So if we look over to the insert menu here, you can see there's a little button called part. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on the little down arrow just to show you that you can select four different kinds of parts to add in to your project. So the most basic of parts is the block. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on block and you can see it inserts a block into the uh, our project here. Now you can see over in the edit menu here that we have material, 
color, group, ungroup, and anchor. Okay, so for the material, if we hit the down arrow, we can actually change the material of the selected part. So we'll go ahead and, looks like brick. We'll just go ahead and click on brick. That looks cool. So you can see it adds in a brick texture to the um, part that we added in. Now if I wanted to change the color on this, I would just go ahead and click on the color tab here and let's change it to a more brick looking color. This this light red over here. And you can see now we have a brick looking brick. And you can see this anchor button here. We could have this part be anchored and anchor parts cannot move in game due to physics when the game is running. So it's basically stuck or anchored in its place. And there's also these tools over here for moving and scaling, which we'll get to, and, and terrain and testing. But we'll get to those in, when we look at the other tabs. So I want to start looking at some of the different panels. You can see we have a toolbox and tutorials panel here. So the toolbox contains a library of models and decals made by Roblox community members. These assets are free to use in your games. And the toolbox also includes all of the models and decals you have published so you can quickly and easily use them in multiple games. Clicking on an asset in the toolbox will insert it into your game. So it looks like right off the bat we see there's a tower here and a pine tree. So if I wanted to put a pine tree into the game, I could just click on the pine tree. And it downloads and inserts the pine tree right into the game. So this is a great feature. And one of the most important parts of your game is a spawn point, or what they call, they call it a start place. And so if you look, uh, let's see, if we, go, if we drag up the sidebar here to the top, and we drop down this menu where it says models, I'm going to go ahead and click on Roblox sets. And what it should do is show us a start place piece that we can drag into the game. And what the start place piece will do is allow you to dis determine where your character is going to enter the world when you start the game. So you can see um, it has some pieces here. Um, and what we're looking for is actually, it's not called start place, it's called neutral spawn. So when I click on this, it should add in a neutral spawn place. I don't see it. Let me click on it again. There. So this, this block right here is where our character is going to enter once we hit play and test out the game. So if you look up here, there's a test menu, and the play button allows you to test out your game. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see we are inserted on the spawn, or on the neutral spawn, as they call it. And I can walk around the game right off the bat I didn't do any coding and you can jump by pressing spacebar and you know I'm just moving around with W A S and D and dragging the mouse um, by the way if you want to drag your screen you click on your middle mouse wheel and drag the mouse and you can run around so this looks good we got our tree and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit stop to stop our test so some of the other panels aren't available by default. You have to actually enable them. So we're going to go over to the View tab, and we want to open up Game Explorer and Properties and Explore. And these make making the game much more organized. The Explorer panel shows a list containing every instance inside of your place. And this list uses the concept of parenting to organize all of the instances in a hierarchy. And if the instance has any children, it will show an arrow next to its name in the Explorer. So we see our pine tree, and it has a bunch of children. It has a bunch of leaf children. And to make an instance the child of another, all you got to do is just drag it in the Explorer to the instance you want it to be the parent. So some of the default uh, items you'll see here is the workspace. And the workspace contains all of the visible objects in the place. If you want a part or model to appear in the game and be affected by the game's physics or other systems, it should be in here. There's also players, and players contains the players currently in the place, so this is for multiplayer gaming, and lighting, lighting controls various settings relating to lighting, and 
this replicated first section replicates all of its contents to the player client before anything else is replicated. So it's useful for loading screens. And replicated storage is a storage service whose contents are accessible to the server and clients. And we have server script service, which stores and runs server-side scripts in your place. And any active script inside this service will automatically run when the place starts. Server storage stores instances on the server without replicating to the client. And we have starter GUI, which stores the GUI, or graphical user interface, elements which are replicated to a player's player GUI when the player joins the place or respawns. We have starter pack, which stores tools and scripts which are replicated to a player's backpack when the player joins the place or respawns. And starter player contains various player settings and local scripts that run when the player first joins the game. And soundscape that controls various settings relating to audio. So if you wanted to upload a model to the Roblox site so that other users could see it in their toolbox, basically you would do that in the Explorer window. You would right click and select Save to Roblox. So if I wanted to export our brick part wherever it went, um, looks like it's it's right under the tree. So if I'm yeah, it's right there. If I wanted to upload this part, I would just right click on it and I would click Save to Roblox and that would upload it to the Roblox site. And we also have the Properties panel over here. Uh, it's basically the properties of whatever object you have selected. And any changes you can make with a tool can be made by manipulating the values inside the Properties window. So, for example, if you had a car, you could sometimes control the speed of the car in the Properties panel, which I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. So let's go to the model tab and this is a very important tab which contains tools you can use to create detailed models and add advanced objects. So um, just to get this brick out from underneath the tree let's go ahead and I'm gonna click on the brick and you can see there's a move button here and when I click on move I am able to move the brick along the three different axes and if you click on scale you can change the size of your brick. So you can make it big, I could turn this into a brick wall just by dragging on the three different buttons. It's actually, it's actually six for each different direction. And same thing with rotate. If I click on rotate, but if I wanted to rotate it this way, I can just basically drag that green circle around and it will rotate it. If you look at the solid modeling menu, it contains tools used to create new geometry beyond the basic parts Roblox provides. So beyond the four parts we looked at earlier. If you look at the gameplay menu, basically allows you to insert gameplay specific functions like explosions or fire or smoke. The advanced menu allows you to insert advanced game objects. You can see it allows you to put in a script. And let's go ahead and look at the terrain tab. And this is a really cool feature. I love how you can work with terrain. You can basically create hills. Um, if you look at the grow button, I'm going to push on grow and basically it's going to allow me to create a hill wherever I drag the mouse with, with the uh, primary mouse click. Um, and if I wanted to create a rocky hill, I could click on the little rocky texture here and basically just drag up and you can see it's starting to make a rocky hill. So if I hit play, I'll be able to run in and see this rocky hill and, and run over it. And you can also go the other way around. You can erode, and that'll basically allow you to oh, click on erode, and erode will allow you to basically create a hole so you can undo a hill if you want. I'm going to hit Control Z and undo those two holes. Um, ah, why not? Let's, let's leave the hole. I mean, go ahead and click on erode, and oh, go ahead and just make a hole right there. And I believe you'll fall into infinity if you fall in that hole. And there's also smooth, and you can paint. You can you can paint. You know, if I wanted to make a brick road, I click on paint, click on the brick texture, and you can look. It will create bricks um, wherever I drag the mouse. So yeah, so let's go ahead and test out what we've just created. We want to hit play, so I'm gonna click on test, and then click play, and you can see. We are inserted into the game, and I'm running around. There's the hole I created, and let's go ahead and jump in that hole. Yeah. But yeah, the Roblox is a great 
platform for making games and you can make a whole different variety of games. So thanks for watching and look out for future videos. Have a good one.